Alright, so recently there have been a lot of rabbits. Usually I don't have a problem with rabbits, but these rabbits are eating my vegetables, and I couldn't let that happen. And so I decided I would build a rabbit deterrent system using computer fishing. How the system would work is every time the object detection model detected a rabbit, it would play some sort of sound, and the sound could be babies crying or perhaps a car passing by. And in essence, this would just scare away the rabbit. Before I could train a model, I needed to collect some data. But in order to know what type of rabbits I wanted my model to detect, I had to do a little bit of research and see what type of rabbits were located where I lived. After a little bit of googling, I actually found out that in the North Texas area there are eastern cottontail rabbits. So the object detection model I would be training would be detecting eastern cottontail rabbits. After I collected all of my data, I uploaded it into Roboflow. Roboflow has annotation tools which allow me to annotate on images. These annotations will help the object detection model know what to look for when looking for rabbits. I then added some pre-processing and augmentation steps to the images. The pre-processing steps I added were to resize and auto-orient the images to ensure consistency between images. The augmentation steps I added were to change the saturation, brightness, exposure, and add some cutouts to simulate real-life circumstances. To train the model, I used Roboflow's one-step training process. This will create an object detection model based on your dataset and outputs a curl command, an example web app, and a webcam demo for you to use. After I trained the model, the model had an 88.1% map, a 60.6% precision, and 89.5% recall. To use my trained model, I can use Roboflow's inference API to programmatically access my model via Python or another programming language by leveraging the model endpoint found in the curl command. This allows me to utilize the model for my own applications and projects. More information about how to use Roboflow's inference API can be found on the Roboflow documentation. To set up the rabbit deterrent system, I used four different things. The first thing I used is a Raspberry Pi, but more specifically a Model 3 or above. So obviously you'll need a Raspberry Pi since we're deploying our project on it, but the reason you'll need a Model 3 or above is because many of the items that we use for this project may not be compatible with older Raspberry Pis. Personally, I'm using the Raspberry Pi Model 3B. The next item I recommend getting would be the MakerHawk Raspberry Pi power supply. For this project, we need some sort of power supply in order to power the Raspberry Pi. Because my garden does not have an outlet next to it, I'm using this MakerHawk Raspberry Pi power supply. If your garden does have an outlet, you probably don't need this because you can plug in your Raspberry Pi directly into the power outlet. This power supply relies on two 18650 lithium ion rechargeable batteries, and I have found this power supply to be relatively reliable as well as long lasting, and you can recharge it so it's easy to use over and over again. However, one thing to note is if you choose to use this power supply, you will need to buy the batteries separately. That said, it's an incredibly good power supply that I highly recommend. Next, you'll want to get a Bluetooth speaker, and quite frankly, any Bluetooth speaker should be fine, but the Bluetooth speaker I'm recommending is the CANS Bluetooth speaker. The reason I recommend this speaker is because it is battery operated and rechargeable, meaning it is easily portable and can be used anywhere. It's also incredibly easy to pair this up with the Raspberry Pi, making setting up the system much easier. 
The final thing you'll need is a camera. The camera I'm recommending is the Articam 5 megapixel camera. The reason I recommend this camera is because it's a very good camera for a relatively cheap price, and it has native Raspberry Pi support so you won't need to configure anything once you've set it up. This will be used as the camera to view the rabbit. You can also use a different camera you have, such as a USB webcam. For this project, I tried both a USB webcam and the Articam to see if there was a significant difference in the detections when camera quality increased. Now that I integrated the code with my Raspberry Pi, I needed a way to access the camera remotely from my laptop. The current method I was using to access the camera was through using OpenCV's camera viewer, but unfortunately you cannot access the Raspberry Pi's camera viewer when using the Raspberry Pi remotely. In order to overcome this, I decided to leverage the Flask framework to build a web server where I could view the camera from my browser. How this essentially worked is that I would wrap a Flask web application around my OpenCV code and send frames to the Flask interface, which would be streamed on a web page. I could use this to view both the camera as well as the detection it was seeing. My model performed well, but I knew it could do better, and I wanted my data to be more variable to better simulate real life conditions. That's why I decided to implement active learning into my project. Active learning is a process of retraining a model with more precise and specific data that better mimics your situation to improve model performance. In this project, one way we can implement active learning would be to collect data on the fly once we set up our system outside. This would be ideal for increasing model performance because all new data we would add into our dataset will be from scenarios our system will encounter once set up in the garden. To implement active learning, I utilize RoboFlow's Upload API for images and annotations. This API allows me to upload images and annotations into a, a RoboFlow dataset programmatically. For the annotations, I formatted the model predictions into a CreateML format and sent that over to RoboFlow. To avoid adding bad data to the dataset, I added thresholds in the confidence level of each annotation that was added and the threshold for how blurry the image was. This would help make sure that the annotations for the most part were valid annotations and the image had all objects visible. To connect my Bluetooth speaker, I use the Raspberry Pi's Bluetooth capabilities which allow me to trust, pair, and connect an external device. I then wrote up a sound testing script and used it to test whether the speaker worked.
The next step was to test and deploy our system into real conditions. I decided to place the Raspberry Pi portion of the system to where it could oversee the portion of my backyard it would protect from rabbits. I placed my speaker next to the garden itself so that nearby rabbits would hear the sound loudly and retreat. All I had left to do now was wait for rabbits, and so I waited, and waited, and waited. 2,000 years later. Alright, so at this point I had still not seen a rabbit, so I decided to try a couple of different things. The first thing I tried was to have the system monitoring during the night because the rabbits are more likely to show up because of the cooler temperatures. The second thing I tried was deploying my system in a different location because perhaps the rabbits were dwelling in areas I was not monitoring. Unfortunately, in both instances, they completely evaded my system by staying away from the general location, so in a sense, you could say the system was working, but just not in the way I was intending. However, that's when I had an idea. A big brain idea. I decided to try to lure the rabbits in using carrots. And well, there you have it, a working scenario of the rabbit deterrent system. While you can't hear the sound because the Raspberry Pi does not have sound input functionality, you can clearly see the rabbit running away after it had been detected because the sound of the baby crying scared it away. The last thing left to do was to review the active learning data our system had collected. After looking through some of the active learning data, I had noticed some pieces of good data such as this, but we also had some bad data which only went to show that our model has room for improvement. To briefly summarize this project, we first conducted a data collection process to gather data that would eventually be used to train our model. We then used RoboFlow to annotate our images for eastern cottontail rabbits and prepare our dataset via the pre-processing and augmentation tools. Using RoboFlow's one-click training process, we trained an object detection model that would detect eastern cottontail rabbits. After that, we integrated RoboFlow's inference API into our project so we could programmatically access our model. We then assembled our Raspberry Pi system that would later be deployed into the garden. To effectively use our Raspberry Pi, we built a web server allowing us to remotely access the camera. Utilizing the RoboFlow upload API, we added an active learning system to dynamically add data on the fly. Then we utilized the Raspberry Pi's Bluetooth capabilities to connect to a Bluetooth speaker. We deployed and tested our model in the garden in different scenarios including time of day, location of system, and with and without a carrot. Finally, we reviewed our active learning data, which we could use to train another model that better adapts to the conditions of our environment. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to our channel. The dataset I created, code for the system, and an accompanying blog post that goes into more detail on how the system works can be found in the description below. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out and thank you for watching.